Yes. You mean the bell up here? Um, well, in in a certain way, it's just a an instrument that tells us when to begin and when to end, when to stand. I mean, so in a certain way, in the silence of the meditation hall, it allows us to know what to do. Okay, so in that sense, uh, it is uh, it has a functional purpose, uh, but also uh, sound especially a sound like that, is an aid to uh, our meditation. Okay? Because uh, especially uh, a, a, a good bell <laughs> that has a good rich sound, uh, if you listen to it, you will hear that when it is invited or struck, it starts out, you hear it very loudly, I would say, but if you listen very carefully, it fades, doesn't it? And then the next bell, boom. And then you listen to it and it fades. And so it's an aid to your meditation because if you are listening deeply to it, it can help concentrate and stabilize the mind. It can almost bring you into a deeper meditative state to begin, right? You're just, you, you hear the bell, you listen totally to it. And you're really listening to the sound, just fade, 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 fade. At the end of the third one, it should just bring you right into the silence, because you're kind of already there. So bells are, uh, they're, they're timekeepers, uh, but they're also very helpful. Uh, in the Thich Nhat Hanh tradition, actually, they have a gata that says, listen, listen, this wonderful sound brings me back to my true self, which is another mean, meaning that it kind of we use the sound of the bell to kind of remind us about being mindful. So when we hear the bell, we stop, and we just come back to our breath if we've left it. But also, uh, one can learn to use uh, other sounds to do that, right? So your, your phone rings. Most people, when their phone rings, what do they do? Immediately, right? But now that you've come today, what's your name? Steve, so now that you know Steve, I'd say you can wait let it ring a few minutes, or at least three or four times, and just breathe. Use, use your phone to kind of be a bell of mindfulness. You know, where am I right now? Am I present? Was I just lost in some drama, some story, right? So you, you don't, rather than picking the phone right up, you let it ring a few times, and you just breathe one in and out, just to come back, right? And you can use other people's... <laughs> Phones going off uh, to do that. You see, so so uh, the bell of mindfulness, uh, while it's in the in the meditation hall, is a formal thing. Uh, one can use, learn to use sounds uh, that are all around us to kind of bring us back. We want to come back because as we go through our day, we get lost. Right, just boom, 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 boom. boom. You know, it just keeps running. And at the end of the day, we wonder why am I exhausted? Why am I stressed? Why do I feel weary? Why do I have trouble sleeping, right? I mean, there's no, you know, I mean, there's no mystery here because my, I just let my mind just run on all day, right? And then I'm surprised that it doesn't stop. Like it's supposed to stop on its own. I mean, we're the caretakers of our mind. But nobody told us that, did they? We never learned that. It's like the most fundamental thing. We have a mind. We're the caretakers of it, right? I mean, for many people, just learning they're the caretakers of their body is like an awakening, right? Oh, isn't it? Can't I just stuff anything I want into it? Can I just stuff anything I want into it? Can I just, you know, use it any way I want, you know? You know, I mean, like people take some years often, often because they have problems before they get, oh, I'm the caretaker of my body, right? It relies on me to make the right decisions for it, right? What to eat, what not to eat, how much sleep to get, exercise, you know, that's my job. Everybody understand that? Is anybody here who never got that lesson early on, 
I'm giving it to you now. We're the caretakers of our body. It relies on us to make the decisions for it. If you let it make its own decisions, it will not serve you well, will it? Oh, that looks good. Mm, I have a craving for that. Mm, you know, it's like... It's like a three-year-old. Isn't it? I have a grandson who's a three-year-old, so I kind of watch him in action. That's a three-year-old. You know, it's like... He's discovered that he can open the fridge. <laughs> Right? He doesn't have to wait for mommy and daddy to give him food like he used to. He can open the fridge. The other day, he reached in there and pulled out some kefir and just started gobbling it down. I mean, it was like heaven for him. Great freedom. I mean, but that's like many of us. Now, there is, uh, you know, a growing awareness among some sectors of our society these days uh, that we are here to take good care of our body, right? To make sure that what we put into it and how we use it and not abuse it uh, is, is uh, very important for our health, for our longevity, for our well-being. Uh, but there still sees a, a fundamental uh, ignorance in our society that even more important is our mind, right? Because you can have a healthy body. You can go to the gym two hours a day and you can eat, uh, you know, a vegan uh, diet and you can have uh, endless protein supplements and you can take all the vitamins uh, in the world and you can still be miserable, right? You can still be unhappy. You can still be a kind of a rotten human being, can't you? even though you have a beautiful, healthy body. So, even more essential than, than being caretakers of our mind, we need to be, I mean, of our bodies, we need to be caretakers of our mind. That's what spiritual practice is about. That's what meditation and the whole meditative traditions are about. How do we take care of our minds? How do we have a healthy mind? What is a healthy mind? Most people don't even know what a healthy mind is, right? I mean, most people don't even know what a healthy body is in our society, right? But, but when, when you ask people what a healthy mind is, what do you think people are going to say? If you go run around asking, right? Let's say you were outside of Publix and you just got a clipboard and you look like you were doing a survey. Sir, ma'am, what, what do you think is a healthy mind? What do you think people would say? How do you think people will respond? What? Yeah, they, you're right. I think a lot of people go, what? <laughs> you know, they wouldn't even have, what are, you, what are you talking about? I've never thought about that. Right? It's kind of scary. But anyhow, we are the caretakers of our body and more importantly, of our minds. In Buddhism, there's something called Nutriments. Usually we think nutriments are just things uh, about what we can, our body consumes. But actually that's only one. More than nutriments are what, are what is our mind consuming? What are our senses consuming? We don't realize that our mind and our senses are eating all the time. And a lot of what we're putting in is toxic. It's not healthy. Right? So we have to be very careful about what our mind is consuming, what it's eating. Because in the same way, uh, they say, um, you know, you are what you eat, right? Like, you know, the kinds of things you eat are, are the food that's creating your physical body, right? But in, but in the same way, our actions, our reactions, our thoughts, our feelings, the whole uh, life of, of what goes on in our mind is what we are eating. And then we're regurgitating and eating and regurgitating and eating and regurgitating. And if it's all from the beginning, bad food, toxic food, what are we doing? 
Right? What, are, what are we creating in our minds? And we wonder why we have the minds we have. Because we don't take care. We're not as careful. Right? You know, people go to the store, you see them these days, right? They pick up something, they check out the ingredients, you know. The, the, wanted to have this, don't want it to have that, right? You know, people are very careful, some people, about what they eat these days and ingredients. But, but then when, when it comes to thoughts and feelings and life and activities and what we do, what we consume with our mind, it's like people have, they don't check anything out. Checking things out is called mindfulness, by the way. Mindfulness is often, in, in the traditional Buddhist meditative tradition, it's called the gatekeeper. I am mindful of what is going on around me. I am mindful of what is going on within me. I am mindful whether things are wholesome. I am mindful of whether things aren't wholesome. That's mindfulness. It's a gatekeeper. There's no gatekeeper. Why do they have gated communities? Keep the riffraff out, right? That's, keep, keep, right? Well, we, don't, we, we need a gatekeeper. Yes. What, not what? No, no, no. In Buddhism, actually, I don't, are you familiar with Buddhism at all? Yeah, the Buddha said to his own disciples, don't take everything I say just because I'm the Buddha, because you respect me. Yeah, chew it. Yeah, so good. Say that again, what? Uh-huh. 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 My question to you yeah, yeah, is what? That when you talk about what we are the mm-hmm. mm-hmm. the truth self, mm-hmm. the truth self that we're trying to cultivate and assume in the Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, this... Well, those are a lot of questions. What's your name? Janji. Well, that's a lot of questions, Janji. Um, oh, you want me to repeat? This is being recorded? Oh, okay. So the question, hmm, how can I repeat that question? Uh, there, were, there were a couple of questions. One is, uh, uh, if I'm a good Buddhist, am I just supposed to be listening to whatever you say and just taking it in and, uh, and just following it blindly? Or am I allowed to think about things and reflect on things? And the second one was, oh, this gatekeeper, is that my true self? Is that the real me? Who is this gatekeeper? What is this gatekeeper? Is that it? Okay, good. I'm, I'm practicing being a good listener. <laughs> um, yeah, so in Buddhism, it is considered uh, good in the beginning to check things out, okay? Not to accept blindly either the Dharma or a teacher. Check them out. Check her out, right? But after a certain point, uh, after you've checked, checked the Dharma out, checked the teacher out, if it meets your criteria for something that seems uh, good, something that seems practical, something that's been tested, something that seems reasonable, something that'll seem beneficial. You know what I mean? You've kind of checked it out. It all seems pretty good and authentic, and you've done that. Well, see, the problem is, what do you do then? You see, because why have you come to the Dharma? Why have you come to a spiritual path? Why have you come to a teacher? And the answer would be, why? Yeah, I'm asking you. Right, and you don't know how to do it, do you? Isn't that the truth? Or you wouldn't be here, right? Well, it's deeper than that. It's like, it's the truth is, we don't know what we're doing. We try to do it on our own. We've read the books, we've gone here and there. And still, we have to admit that we're, 
we're not happy. Our mind's not at peace. See, see, see how hard it is to even admit that publicly? But that's really the truth. We're all screwed up. <laughs> right? We read things, we can't follow through on them. We have all these intentions and they last for about five minutes, right? And that's the truth, isn't it? Right? We need help. Right? We're lost, we need help. Right? I can't find my way out of the woods. Right? Sometimes I think I'm, I'm following a path, but then I find, find out I end up at some dead end, or I end up, you know, oh, I've been doing this, this, and this, and this, and you know what I mean? And then you get, you know, like they do, so, you know, it's like, haven't I been here? It's like, yeah, I'm back, <laughs> you know, I'm back at the same place I started. This looks familiar, right? So at some point, again, pe most people don't get there, but at some point, if you're really serious about wanting to awake and wanting to be free and all the good stuff, you have to realize, you have to be willing to admit, I cannot do this on my own, right? Now, it gets interesting. Because that means, one, it's hard for people to admit, because we have very big egos and very big investments in uh, thinking, you know, we, we know what's best for us. But the truth is we don't, do we? We think we do, but we really don't by the actions of our life. So at some point, we have to surrender. And if there's one group of people who don't like to surrender is who? Americans. Because we have all kinds of issues around trust, authority, you know, right? I mean, we have all these issues. So it makes it hard to trust, or, you know, we don't trust authority, we don't trust ourselves, you know. But the problem is, if we're going to get out of the woods, we've got to trust somebody, right? Because we don't know how to get out. So it's a dilemma. Hopefully it can be resolved. You know, hopefully at some point you'll find a path, you'll find a teacher, somebody who seems to know how to get out of the woods, and you trust them. At that point, depends how fast you want to get out of the woods. <laughs> You know, it's really as simple as that, right? Right? You know, you can just follow the directions and you'll get out pretty fast. But if you want to kind of chew on every direction, well, I wonder what this means. And what am I doing? well, it says do this, but I really, I bet I could just do that. Or it says take three of these, but I could probably get away with just one of the, right? You know. So here's the path, right? Here's where you want to get to. You can just go straight on it, right? Or you can, you know, walk, you know, a little bit and then wander off. Mm, this looks interesting. I wonder where this path goes, right? You know. But you're 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 kind of connected to the path, right? So you don't wander as far as you used to, but you still wander. I go here, go there, oh, this looks interesting. Get back on the path, oh, nah. no, 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 let, let, let me get back on the path. That's where most people are. They stray a little bit, they wander off, but oh, you know, this is, you know, oh yeah, they get back on the path, yeah. And they get back on the path for a little bit, and they, things are a little better, they made a little progress, and they're off again. You know, lifetimes can go by like that. It's really up to you, you know. You know, again, you know, what, what Dalai Lamas, Thich Nhat Hans, I mean, they're, they're just human beings. What's the difference between them and us? They, they, you know, they follow the directions. <laughs> That's all. Right? You know, you know, they did what their teacher told them to do. You know, they studied, they practiced. It's really kind of simple. Then you can relax. Oh, gee, I don't have to struggle all the time and keep making mistakes and wandering off. And, you know, and, oh, you know, I've got to get myself back on. And, I mean, do you know how much energy people spend on going off and getting themselves back on? Got to get back on the path. Got to work my way back. Whew, really got off. You know, got to work my way back. You know, so 
I mean, you see how much energy this is? This is easy. Just one foot in front of the other. Follow the path. It's up to you. Right? So when you receive teachings, it doesn't mean you don't digest them. But you digest them in terms of not your own understanding, but to use the teachings to challenge your understanding. Gee, I always thought it was this way. That's interesting. I wonder what this means. Right? Now, in terms of your second question. Gatekeeper. Again, sounds great. Problem is what? We have a blind gatekeeper. Can't see straight, or, or kind of a, uh, you know, a, 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 a gatekeeper that has an astigmatism, or is, has, you know, big cataracts. Right? That's our gatekeeper. That's the problem. It's the same thing. What's your name again? Janji. Yeah, it's the same thing. You see, yeah, at the end of the day, it is about empowerment. It is about waking up our own intrinsic wisdom and understanding, right? It is having an activated true nature that is actually present in, in our lives, right? It's about the cultivation of discriminating wisdom and right and understanding, right? But again, those are nice words, but what if we don't have it yet? And the voice within us that we've been listening to is always, not always, a lot of the time giving us what? Bad advice. You know who I'm talking about. You know that voice inside you? It's primarily giving you bad advice. Why? Because it's invested in that. It maintains itself by giving you bad advice. Oh, you go ahead and eat this. Yeah. Right, how many, how many, you know that voice? People know that voice when they eat. Oh, you can eat this, go ahead. A little won't be bad. Tomorrow you can exercise a little more, or cut back, to, you know. It's always just giving you bad advice. Right? Oh, you don't feel like it, why don't you go do this? Yeah, you don't, feel, you got too many things, you don't need to meditate today. You got more important things to do. Like what? Like what? Like what? Cruise the internet. You know, watch Netflix. You know, you know, what, what's, you know? That's the voice, right? So, that is why when you follow a spiritual path, it kind of gives you advice to the gatekeeper. These are wholesome. These are not wholesome. These are helpful. These are harmful. Right? These are healthy. These are toxic. Ways of thinking, ways of speaking, ways of behavior. Right? So in the beginning, we put the teachings and the teacher as our gatekeeper. Right? Over time, hopefully, we will internalize. You know, we'll get it. We'll start having our own sense of what's healthy and what's not healthy, what's good and what's not good, right? What's toxic and what's not, what's really beneficial and what's not. So we will no longer need, right? Uh, kind of, we might say, the, the internalized external. It's become us. But, uh, you know, we have to be honest with ourselves. Does that, does that answer your question? Yeah? Or? <laughs> well, let's see if nobody... Okay.